hospital ship with United States Army nurses arrives in Port Moresby to care for troops wounded in the furious fighting for New Guinea. More serious cases are sent back to the Australian mainland. Well-dressed and equipped for service in the tropical climate, the American girls, accompanied by Australian nurses, called sisters, come ashore to staff field hospitals near the front. Across the Coral Sea, a motor torpedo boat brings a cargo of Japanese aviators captured in waters off Guadalcanal. These prisoners of war are lucky. The Japs have lost more than 800 planes in five months of fighting in this area alone. Here, as on all fronts, the United Nations practice humane treatment of prisoners. An interesting sidelight from the Solomons. United States Marines counting a trunk full of genuine Japanese money captured during one of the enemy's attempts to invade the islands. Nearly 100,000 yen, enough coins and currency to pay an entire division of Japanese soldiers. Now, in an offshore patrol boat, our cameraman goes with the general staff for an inspection of Guadalcanal's outer defenses. Directing the campaign, the officers arrive at their advanced positions just as artillery opens fire. Powerful 105 and 155 millimeter howitzers blasting the Japs from their last positions on Guadalcanal. America's great universities swing open to the army. At Yale University, one of the biggest and oldest, 3,000 officer cadets come to complete their training for the Army Air Force. Today, America's halls of learning resound to the tread of marching feet. Young men are turning from the studies of the liberal arts to become students of war. Army teachers replace headmasters in cap and gown. Machine guns have no conscience, says the writing on the blackboard. Words these future lieutenants may well remember. The huge dining hall of Yale University now turned into a super mess hall for the Army. No less eager to do their bit, American college women adopt the same physical training program the Army prescribes for its men. For more rigid exercise and bodybuilding, they practice on a snow-covered obstacle course. Purely recreational sports are discouraged while the country is at war. Their job is to gain strength and health for the duties they will be called on to perform. dirigible pilots get their first lesson in lighter-than-aircraft from hydrogen-filled balloons. Here they walk a big bag out for a test flight over California. Today, small patrol dirigibles are proving highly successful in spotting enemy submarines. The balloon crew makes a practice landing. Expert navigation steers the huge ball to just where they want it to come to Earth.
free balloons have no military value, but they do give student pilots training in air currents and maneuvering so necessary in flying a Navy dirigible. A rip cord opens the fabric of the balloon and the big bag collapses to be folded for a future flight. The shadow of the dirigible is already a menace to submarines. At a United States Army school in flexible gunnery, sharpshooters learn to use aerial machine guns, training their fire upon small disks hurled by a machine into the air. From the gun turret of a model bomber, they shoot from every position. <laughs> Trying to hit the tiny moving targets is the best training possible. When they pass this test, they're real flying sharpshooters. graduate of such a school is a man known to cinema fans the world over, Clark Gable. Refusing a higher rank, he volunteered as a private and worked his way up. Now he's awarded the silver wings of an aerial gunner, a first lieutenant in the Army Air Force. Clark Gable, movie star, playing his greatest role. Manning a 50 caliber gun, he will soon be in action against the enemy. miles from England, American parachute troops rest on a landing field in Algeria after making the longest airborne invasion of the war. Now, accompanied by British aerial infantry, who well know the North African countryside, they board giant United States transport planes to seize an important military objective in Tunisia. Transports are escorted by squadrons of fast P-38s, American fighter planes. Part of the trip is over the Mediterranean. Now, coming in over the coastline, they're nearing enemy-held territory. Directly above the objective, and the order is bail out. That means jump. Landing in force, they take the vital North African airdrome at Sukalarba, just five minutes before German planes bent upon the same mission were driven off. Another field from which United Nations Air Forces are conducting their combined offensive to drive the Axis from the shores of Africa.